Hey everyone, Dave Hegenbarth, VP of Systems Engineering here at Pliant. And today I'm very happy to be with all of you at Onug Fall 2020. I thought we were going to be in New York together, but instead I'm presenting here from the basement, as well as you're probably watching from some other location that's way different than th where we thought we'd be. Nevertheless, I'm excited to show you how our no-code, low-code platform at Pliant it's transforming how organizations automate their network and IT infrastructures. Some of the key benefits this year we've seen is faster automation. Apply customers to be able to keep pace with this crazy changing world by completing automation projects in days, not weeks or months. The use of automation has also lowered the rate of errors that are introduced when configuring infrastructure components by hand. This has led to a dramatic reduction for some of our customers in the number of help desk tickets after an installation has been complete. Lastly, while no one likes to troubleshoot their code, Pliant includes a full debug output for the code that comes with each of the action blocks that you use to build automation. Pliant Secure Automation allows you to build workflows quickly using drag and drop blocks. Whether you're configuring a router, adding a firewall rule to a Palo Alto firewall, or building a virtual machine in Amazon or Azure or Google Cloud. These action blocks are the way of the future. They greatly decrease the amount of time it takes you to build any given infrastructure automation. In the demo I'm about to show you, we're gonna use these action blocks to build an IPsec tunnel from our corporate Palo Alto firewall to a VPN in AWS. We'll then build a Linux server in the region set the appropriate security group rules, and then we'll add that server to SolarWinds so we know that it can be monitored, and also we'll add it to our ServiceNow CMDB so we can track it as a corporate asset. All of these tasks could be done by hand, but it's hard not to make mistakes throughout the process. We've all been there when a VPN tunnel doesn't come up because we've mismatched some setting on one side of the tunnel. Also, how often do we forget to tell the folks who do corporate monitoring that we have this new important asset that needs to be monitored and ensure that it's up all the time. And lastly, as I mentioned, keeping track of assets in a CMDB, when the assets can be spun up or destroyed virtually, uh, it's very hard to keep that in sync. All of this can be done with a series of action blocks. Let's go over to the lab and see how Pliant does this. All right, before we go over to the lab, I'm going to put up the drawing one more time. We have our Palo Alto firewall in the corporate here, and we want to build an IPsec tunnel out to AWS using the action blocks in Pliant. So we're going to build that tunnel. We're going to connect to the VPN that's in that region. We're going to add that virtual machine to SolarWinds and then add that virtual machine also to our ServiceNow database, all in one automated workflow. Let's take a look. So here we are over in corporate in the Palo Alto firewall where we're going to build a tunnel from this to our AWS VPC. We see a number of tunnels are up already and we want to add ours to it. So we're going to go over to the Pliant product and take a look at how we do that. This is the main dashboard for Pliant. Shows you a little bit about how the platform's running so we can see the number of automations in the last 24 hours, the number in the last five minutes, um, the last five successful automation jobs and the last five that failed. Pliant logs every job and we send those out via syslog to Splunk or Elasticsearch or wherever you might want to keep governance. The other dashboard we have within Pliant is the ROI dashboard. So what did automation actually save me today? So we see executions uh, for today and we see time saved for today. So right now I've saved 12 days, 13 hours and nine minutes of manual labor uh, by running these flows. And we see the flows broken out by top time-saving flows, top executed flows, and the top flows that failed because there may be things that we want to fix. Now if we go over to the workflow that is actually going to build our VPN, come in my demo workflows, provision VPN between, we're going to launch the workflow right here. I'm going to come in and I'm going to push the run button on the workflow. These jobs can obviously be scheduled. They can be automated to run. They can be called via a webhook as well. There's a lot of different ways to kick off an automation within Pliant. Uh, the first block you see here in the drag and drop blocks is the block that sets up our tunnel in AWS or sets all the IPsec things we need in that particular VPC to connect back to corporate. 
Once that's done, we actually gather the information from AWS. We assign it in a variable right here, and then we use it as the input to the routine that builds out the IPsec tunnel on the Palo Alto side. So we can see here all the different variables that go into doing that. And this is no different than you and I sitting there and typing by hand. We have to exchange a number of different settings and shared password and everything for IPsec. All of that's being automated for us. And so as that builds out, we'll let this run a little bit. Once that happens, we'll get the result and we'll pump that into a variable as well. And we can see the execution has completed. So the tunnel has been configured. It will take a minute for that to come up and we'll go take a look at that as well. Then we move on to a block which will allow us to add the virtual machine in that VPC to SolarWinds so we can make sure that we monitor it. So we're creating the device in SolarWinds. We wait for 10 seconds here and then we actually do a remanage which is the, the process by programmatic process by which you turn on monitoring for uh, things like SNMP inside of SolarWinds. And then lastly, we actually wanted to push that into our CMDB or service now. And so I have a block built specifically to do that. It takes the host name, the IP address, and we add information into service now that we've built this whole connection. If we take a look at our instance in uh, AWS, I'll take a look under uh, virtual site to site connections. And we'll see we have one pending. We have a few from when I ran before, but we have a site that's pending. Uh, we have a virtual private gateway that's been configured for us in the demo. And we have a customer gateway that was been configured for us in the demo as well. So all of this has been configured without me having to do anything. Um, if I come up uh, to subnets, we'll see that we have a public and a private subnet that have been created as well. If I go over to SolarWinds, we'll see that we've had an event. We have one node added, so that node's been put in here. And if I take a look, um, we'll see that this VM AWS West has been added to SolarWinds. So that just happened. So we're excited about that. And lastly, if I come over to ServiceNow, we'll see that if I update the, the this page here in the CMDB or the CI, we'll see here that we've added the VM automatically in here as well. Can click on it we have its IP address the status has changed to installed the category is virtual machine we can give it an asset tag number as well all the way back over to our Palo Alto we'll take a look and see if we've added a tunnel here so we're going to refresh this page and we'll see that we've added the tunnel and the tunnels come up in green for more information about Pliant you can find us at Pliant.io you can also find video demonstrations on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.